Okay, lake one put in, here we go. Uh, this is my setup for 30 days. Uh, see how dirty I get. Right now this is uh, one day, no shower, one day. Let's see what, oh, flies on. I guess it doesn't matter how here, does it? Can you see the mosquitoes? It's pretty bad. Yeah, it's 12.40. You got about two more hours before I want to make camp. I'm gonna do my best to make it to Delta Lake. Day one, pretty sweaty, pretty dirty. So I'm gonna take my first bath already. Okay, we're on day one only and I already have two small setbacks. The straps for the backpack gave out all the way to here. It was just hanging on by a thread here. Hopefully this boot glue works. Before I did that, tried to get the top off and it was uh, glued to it and broke. So I can't put it back on. See, there's no thread for it to go on. This rope fits exactly in there. I had to squeeze it in there. I'm going to cut it off and that should plug it up. Hey, so this is Delta Lake. This is a fire pit that I cleaned out, I think, three years ago. I'm gonna make some spam tonight, baby. And it looks like nobody has been here since. It was before the fire. That's where I'm going tomorrow. That will be off to Starlight. A bunch of lakes, rivers, ponds, puddles, bogs. A whole bunch of fun stuff. Yep, this is camp. That's where I write my wife uh, love notes, because I love her. Some of you would like to know what I eat on these long trips. Let me show you what my uh, main diet is. Okay, so that was a bit tough. Use a stick. I learned that a lot in the narrows. And here it is actually. When you're going through stuff like this and it's all rocky underneath, you can't see where everything's at. It's all mossy. Put this at like a 45, find a good spot, and you take your steps. It helps out immensely, immensely. So this is the first puddle. And then another thing, and another thing, and another thing, and another thing, and another thing, just like this. Okay, so this is a moose path. Uh, I cleared it out a little bit more so that there's not going to be any dead sticks that are pointing from the ground into my canoe as I drag it. Okay, so that was just a little puddle. Some rapids to go up. Luckily the water here is not too high. I just step on these dry rocks. I gotta really take my time. Okay, first two trips were all right with the gear. Uh, made it a little dicey. Now to take the canoe new, that's the more importance though. If I drop that onto sharp, jagged rocks, uh, 
get the hole in there breaks. Yeah, I don't I have to see how much duct tape I have. But here it goes. Okay, so like I said, this is a little puddle. Okay, so make my way to Starlight. I probably made it about halfway there, and it took me all day long, all day long for sure, to find the easiest pass. Uh, I brought just my two bags with me, left my canoe, because uh, no reason to bring the canoe until all the dead branches are slacked off the trees so that they, it doesn't hit like nine feet up. Thank God I had this silky saw. My legs started cramping up, both thighs, inner thighs, cramped up extremely bad. And I was not expecting that because I am down in a lot of water. When they cramped up, I knew it was uh, pretty bad. I had my water, the only water that I have is at the beginning of this. So for me to go back, I have to go back 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, and uh, fill the water up and filter and bring it all this way, which I did. And I have uh, like, a gallon left so hopefully that lasts me till morning but I took a big step and split it so I'm gonna have to sew that up sometime this isn't really good material to sew either but we'll see yeah that's where we are uh, tomorrow I plan on bushwhacking the rest of the way uh, the problem is uh, I have two maps one that's a GPS and one that's well an actual map oh I don't know if you can see this is starlight right here and i am right in here somewhere so or i'm sorry I'm, I'm somewhere right back here so the problem is my other map shows that this is completely dried up there's no water in there no i hope that this is filled up with water if so it'll make it so much easier if not oh this cramp better be go going tomorrow I can't even talk i'm so tired i'm so tired I can hear grouse thumping in the back. I'm so tired, I'm not even gonna cook dinner because also I'm in the middle of a forest. I'm not near a lake or anything like that. So I don't wanna create a fire at all, not even my butane. It's super dry out here, not doing that. I don't know why I grabbed this. I meant to grab this. <laughs> so I'm just filling up oatmeal and uh, not even cooking it and just gonna swallow it. Um, Yeah, all right. Wish me luck tomorrow. This is also a moose trail. So I usually try to follow. <sighs> yeah. 
<clears throat> you can usually tell if it's a moose trail. These stumps are stomped the shit out of and busted apart. There's a bear directly across from me. There he is. You look really cute. I like your ears. Yeah, they're cute. So this is the closest I can come to it. You can see it's really wide there. There's gonna be water on that side. I'll have to abandon this whole port and try to cross the bog and over there, which I don't know if, day four, I don't know if, oh. I did see water that is canoeable on the opposite side of this island here. So it goes down in 90, like 75 degree angle right here. And then it goes up and there's a little island there. I don't think there's any water in between, but on the other side of that island, there's water. And I would have went that way to begin with, which is where I started and then there's a bog and then there's an island over here. I would have gone that way, but it looked like all the water was dried up. I couldn't even canoe across it. So it must be dammed right there somewhere behind this island. So if I'm able to walk that, but go back to the beginning, abandon this whole route and just walk that bog, tough it out, get to the other side, look for that water to put in. Hopefully that water is open all the way to almost Blinker Lake and hopefully Blinker Lake has water in it because if it's not, well then that's another whole situation. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. My rip got a little bit worse. I don't even know where it's at now on me. Okay, so that's where I made my route up this top of that all the way on over and that's not able to be done. That is not doable. The only, only other option is to cross this, make it over there, track across that island and hope that there's water on the other side, which is what I saw. I did see water eventually, but I just don't know how to get to it or where. I know how to get to it. I'm making excuses. Feels like I need to go. But it's kind of nice also having something in the future to look at. Okay, so I made it to the other side and there's flowing water. Fuck. That encourages me to go over and grab my canoe and my gear. Walk the gear all the way around through this. Once I do, first I'm gonna explore this and make sure it's worth it because this comes from a thick stream that I can put in, right? Not too far. That's what I'm gonna do. So this perfect example why I make one path through without bushwhacking anything and see if where I'm going is gonna be the wrong way. And then on the way back, checking as well because it's all been a great path. Can't go that way because that's uh, the bog until you get to this. And then I have a bunch of blowdown. No way can I make it over there. So I gotta go back and check if there's another path, maybe that way. And there isn't any blowdown. I'm running out of options. Uh, this is the very last way that I could possibly go. Okay, I think I found a path. There's where I need to put in. Hopefully this lasts till Blinker Lake. And hopefully Blinker Lake is filled up. Or the one before Blinker to lead me to Blinker. Oh, this is what I'll do. I'll cut all this dead out. This will be my path. 
Right through here. I uh, had a few drinks last night. Set out fishing. The whole thing, this whole lake, is a maximum of seven and a half feet deep. Yeah, seven and a half. So that's a big bummer. So I get a day pack, my fishing pole, just what's necessities, uh, duct tape, first aid. This is my campfire. This is usually how I set it up in the PMA. I build it up high and with two rocks in the middle here so I can put the plate over, or the pan over, or the stove and then disassemble it, scatter the rocks afterwards, of course. I want to get rocks that are from this vicinity too. I don't go far. I'm not going to waste energy doing that. But uh, whenever I get a big rock close by here and I'm making food and stuff, I always make it over here, okay? And then once uh, all the crumbles and everything else fall into there, I dig it out a little bit, push it in there, and then pour more dirt over it and piss on it. Otherwise, you're going to have scattered little dust of pancake mix and shit everywhere, you know? A uh, bare barrel set up like usual. Uh, with a triple arm on it. So if one does try to mess with it while I'm gone. And I have seen three bear. One there. One when I was coming from there. And one on the other end. But hopefully the barrel arm would stop them. And they don't mess up the backpack either. That's a huge worry. Not just them getting into there. But messing up the backpack. The framing. Because lugging that around, I just, oh, anyways. Bare line set up. Oh, I go from here to there, from there to there. Kind of on a peninsula, so. And last night, uh, woke up. I still don't know, and it's been messing with me. But it was really quiet out, and I woke up, and I heard the bear alarms not just shaking like something ran into it, you know not like that it was like all of them were piled up and someone was just doing that to them and i woke up so fast <laughs> grabbed my headlamp and i have my pot underneath i keep my pot so i can bang against the rock right there i got up and i was ready to yell and i'm looking with my headlamp and these things are just still and it's just silent out so i think it was my my i think it was my dream i think i I think I just dreamt that and woke up and freaked myself out, so. Where am I now? <sighs> so this right here should be where I saw the other day when I was on top of that corner over there looking this way. And I was surprised that there was water through here and that's what led me to come this way. Now we'll see if it was all completely wasted. Okay, by standing up, as long as you're stable and have a wide enough canoe, what I'm doing is looking, A, for dead bodies, like a dead moose. If there was a dead moose here with antlers on it, i camp right here in the bog and I would spend a few days deboning that neck and taking back the whole head. I'd leave my pack here and I'd haul the head for a day, come back to my pack, but also I'm looking for bear or moose. I don't want a bear or moose to get up like that and scare them. That would, uh, I don't know. I'd shit my pants. Yeah, that's for sure. Now, I don't know whether or not.
gonna have to take this, take the high ground, look for a moose path to the lake, or see how far this goes. I'm thinking. When I saw the bear yesterday morning, he was right there on that corner, and I was right over here on this corner of this coming down. Done. That is the lake. It is filled up. Halfway. Halfway. Got a video on my phone. You died on me, so that's your fault. But that lake is halfway filled up. I made a port all the way to it. I know how to get here. It takes two days to get to where we are right now. Another half day of porting, and then we'll be in Blinker Lake. And then starlight from there. But I have to give it. I have to call it quits, otherwise I'm not going to enjoy the rest of my three weeks. I'm going to be too tired, too worn out. So my wife really wants me to bring her back a skull if I could find one. And any other bones, of course. And now I find a moose bone. Uh, I don't know, like a part of a leg or something, but nah, I'm not going to haul that. But I did find these three. And they were all together. Well, within probably 10, 20 feet of each other. They're all three different sizes. I mean, I'm guessing that's part of a leg or something. It would be that small. It wouldn't be a rabbit. Small wolf. I think she'll like these and they're lightweight. Perfect condition. <sighs> something else I found. No antlers yet. A lot of mosquitoes. A lot of mosquitoes, man. A shield if I come in close contact with the bear. Pow, pow. Ninja turtle. Ah, pow. Maybe these mosquitoes. Motherfuckers. So this is what the terrain looks like around quartz and the top of the hills, it's all just blow down. And you can tell these used to be nice moose paths, once there's blow downs like this, they stop coming to an area. This is where you find a good spot for a moose laying down. There's said to be, right here. Oh, well, I know where I am right now, it's the heading of the sun. <laughs> Yeah. There's another open area. Ah, yeah, before the blowdown, there'll be antlers right in these spaces like this. You're just in the wrong spot completely. I need to stop wasting my time, my energy mostly. I start heading east again. Uh, probably like uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. Everything packed up. Just got to spread these rocks out, put some back in their holes. All cleaned up. Here we go. You know, I'm in the regular camp spots of the Boundary Waters. Very nice. It's very refreshing to be back here. I stopped at a camp spot on the way here around 12 o'clock just to rehydrate and cook uh, some spam, actually, <laughs> on a fire grate on a campsite nobody was at. I sat down there, and as soon as I sat down, I got a hook in my ass. Right in, <laughs> on my ass, not in my ass. I got a hook on my ass cheek, and it was buried in the dirt. And I tried pulling it out. It didn't, I, I could feel that there was a barb on it, and I couldn't get it out. And I decided I need to go to a campsite to find another person to help me possibly. And I looked in the closest one because the wind was coming towards me. It would have been like 30, 40 minutes paddling. I even tried getting in the canoe. But uh, I couldn't really sit at all on the one side in canoe going against the wind. Uh, so I came back, had a few shots, and I was able to push the barb in, push it up, and out. I mean, it wasn't that simple. It took like four or five tries, but I was able to do that. It was only in there about half inch. Oh, just the tip. So just the tip but anyways uh so i had to scrub it deep scrub it really good with antiseptic scrub it with soap and i uh, bandaged it up with neosporin i hope it doesn't get infected i'm gonna have to keep an eye on it there's so much downed timber there i think maybe i don't think moose even go through there anymore i think once there's downed timber like that i think they vacate the area because i looked through there and i only found old droppings and stuff. anyways so to go through that you pretty much have to walk on one tree to another tree to another tree because it's all down trees about like waist high or higher and you know, I, 
cut myself open pretty bad on a tree. I also scrubbed that out really good. It doesn't look like it because, well, I'm a dirty guy. But anyways, so I'm cooking pizza tonight. Got crushed pepper on there, cheese, pepperoni, marinara sauce, and then here's my can. This is how this hamlock's supposed to be. So each one is separated and it's good to have them on branches that bend in case, you know, in case you get in because uh, that's a good tip. When you get in on these and you have these on branches that aren't and they're too tight, it will rip the top out. I have Wood split, fire's ready to go. Barrel arms attached. Canoe's ready for fishing. Water is filtered. And hammock. And everything's set up for me to relax later tonight. Roman been writing these maps for me for I think like six or seven years so far. Already went over the bogs and grasslands, went through the hilltops, and then I went to the PMA lake. He said the fish was here and this where I should camp. The camp was spot on, but there was no good fish. So now I'm over at this other one and I am camped there. Gonna hit the fishing. There's a cat cave, I guess. I'm pretty sure that's what he said this is. So, I don't know, maybe I just gotta pet a bunch of kittens or something. I mean, we'll figure that out. Damn, my other line went out accidentally. Shit. Hey. down on me when I'm in there. There you go. Okay, so I caught one in this uh, wind when I was trolling back. And a big tip if you're trolling in wind, Put your drag really, really light because uh, if you get snagged and you're in wind by yourself, that's going to be a hard thing to deal with. He, I think he's a big one because he's not pulling. See how he, it's just like a log that I'm bringing in? That's how big ones usually are. My drag set. Fish, but it looks like I'm going to. Okay. Ah, Oh yeah, big walleye. Wow. That's a big walleye. Probably a big, yeah, that's as big as the one that Sydney caught. I'm getting closer. Getting closer to finding a good paddle. Man, what, uh, three years ago, this would have been a nice paddle. That would have been nice. 
Leave that a campsite for kids to look at. Look at that. That just shows you how aggressive northern are. He is just the size of the lure and he's going after that. He thinks he can eat that. Jeez. I almost forgot about this part. Shit. Oh, I mean, I did forget about it. Ouch. That's so rocky. Why can't somebody come out here and pour sand through this? Huh? Okay, so I just got to Thomas about an hour ago, and I'm already leaving. I got here, it was all right for fishing, and now it's starting to gust wind within half hour being out there at the deep end. Lake trout, middle of the lake, 100 or some feet deep, it's no good to so, take 360 rods back. Off no reason. There's that gust. Sucks. Oh, it sucks. Came here for no reason. That was a lot of 40. I promised my wife that one of these trips I'm gonna bring her back a bear skull, a wolf skull, and a moose skull. This is now the fourth one that is completely decayed. Well, not completely, but about a pelvis and some ribs down there too. Uh, I don't know why I'm even keeping them right now. I'll put them at a campfire for people to look at. But my buddy Roman, my best friend, I promised him that I'd get him a tooth. Now, Roman, I'll get you this one and this one. It is day number 10 and I stopped at Amber Lake. It's a little side lake. The entrance is way over there and I hit the north end of the lake. And then there is a river that goes up this way to another lake. Every time I get ready to head out into the bush and go search deep uh, for some bones and stuff, I always look at my what I need to grab. And I scan over and I pan over to the ax or the hatchet and the knife. And I'm like, boy, you know, maybe I should bring that. But then again, I get thinking, if I run into a moose or a bear and I got a problem with them, I'm just trying to think how many stabs it would take to even slow them down or even a, a good whack in the head. Like, would that even slow them down? <laughs> so then I think, fuck no, I'm leaving it. Some campsites aren't easy to pull your canoe into and you don't want to scuff up your canoe any more than what you have to obviously. And so what I do is I take time and I clear all these rocks out. I mean not every rock but all the big ones and everything that so by the time I have to drag it up here I'm lifting up and all that's in the water is the back of the canoe.
Yellow green in the uh, slime. Extra pull this time as you guys break.
Just got done talking to some rangers right over there. And I got this big guy on. He probably, I don't know, he's probably 10 pounds. Oh. And they just told me about a fire bank. That's, oh! Going on at Spice Lake, just north near August. There we go. Oh yeah, he's 10 pounds. Look at that guy. That's a big fish. Okay, while searching for uh, antlers and bones, I'm going through a bog off of Alice Lake. It's uh, I don't know, about a 20 minute walk through a lot of bush. I found a bucket, which people back in the day used to always carry buckets, some still do. Then a Coleman grill. Okay, and we got that. And it's old school, so it's been here for a while. Uh, but it's got fuel in it, which is odd. This with the drill bit on it. There's a tent. This is in the middle of nowhere. Leaving a bucket behind and all that, that's one thing. Then leaving a stove behind, well, that's a nice stove and that's got fuel in it. That's a little weird. But leaving a tent behind and you're at least a few days away from put in. So I stretched the tent out and the tent, you can tell it's been torn open. So I marked this on the map. I'm gonna leave everything as is, and I will let rangers know. I'm just getting back from uh, fishing all day and I pulled my canoe up on the shore. I didn't even notice until I bumped into him. Big giant snapping turtle. And there's a bunch of eggs. Uh, I th think he would be laying eggs, but there's a bunch of eggs like broken. So, yeah, we're just gonna leave him be, I guess. Okay, so. Okay. Okay, so it's day 15 or 16, somewhere in the teens. But uh, my pole broke yesterday on the Big Northern, and it doesn't really matter because I planned on that. You planned on that? Yeah, I planned on that. <laughs> I knew that I was going to be targeting the Big Northerns, 20 to 25 pounders, and I was eventually going to have one break. But one of the big advantages of having a four-piece rod other than at the end of the trip, I can pack it down in my bear barrel or pack it away instead of hold it on ports. But also that I brought an extra two piece end. So instead of bringing a whole extra pole, I just brought two extra pieces. Look at that. That's 10 pounds, right? I think this is something big. Oh. Oh, dang it. Got it? Oh. Don't let go. Oh. Dang it. You just gotta take it. There he is. Oh, I almost had him. 
Here he is. God, come on. It's fucking huge. God, you wanna eat this beaver dam? You gotta be shitting me. Oh, he's smart. Oh, he's smart. Fuck you. Fuck you. He went in there for a purpose. He knew it. Wow, that's the biggest one I've ever had. Had. Past tense. That fish did a lot more than just get off the line. He broke my spirit. Just got a huge one on. Oh no. No. You went out underneath this, huh? Okay. No, 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 no. Motherfucker! This is my tarp set up, so when you don't have somewhere to tie down your tarp, use uh, pine poles. Just find a dead tree and find the ends of that tree, cut it off in sections that uh, you're going to need, that are long enough to fit what you want. And then I just hatch it out to where they could fit in the slides and timed out at an angle. Uh, some that come, if they come loose on you, well then you can also do a little triangle. And this one here, there's a guy 25 mile per hour winds and this, uh, this completely braces all of it. I mean, this is going nowhere. 25 mile per hour winds, this whole thing is just solid. Well, except for my walking stick. When getting out of the canoe, never step on the, the wet part. Always step on the dry, you're gonna have 10 times more traction.
dude. Yes, I do. That's the one that broke my line. That's the one that broke my line. That was a huge fish up out of the water over there, though. Up on the bank. Yeah, I'll help you out. I'll help you out. <laughs> oh, no way. This way, buddy. This way. This way. There we go. Okay. Look, he's ready for the water. Is ready? One, two, three. Wrong way. Take a right. More right. There you go. Okay, so the lure yesterday that broke off on the Big Northern, and then one cast later on, I caught the line that was attached to that lure on that Northern, and almost got that Northern in. And while I was reaching for him, the lure that was stuck on him that broke off, the bill snapped. And so the lure was still stuck on him, I had the bill of the lure with the steel leader and he swam away. Now that was on the other end of this river that I'm on. I don't know, half a mile away. And we had south winds going this way. That south wind went all the way this way. And then now today we have north winds. And the one place that I fish all the time is this peninsula right here. And this is where it ended up, right here. It's a lot of coincidences, if you believe in that coincidence.